Hello people, my name is Ovi Mark, welcome to the channel, it's Artified Optimist. Today we'll be doing a quick roundup on the news making around at this very hour. Alright, Amnesty International condemns killing of Adamawa, of Adamawa Khan chairman. This one is from Sahara Reporters. I just take a few lines from the news. It says, Amnesty International has urged the Nigerian government to ensure that Boko Haram and other terrorist groups involved in crimes against humanity must not go unpunished. AI said this in reaction to the killing of Reverend Lawan Adimi, chairman of a local, a local chapter of Christian Association of Nigeria by Boko Haram. The rights group in a statement said it is appalled by the killing of Andimi, adding that the government must ensure that every member of the terrorist group must be brought to justice. So that's it. It's so sad that this innocent man has been killed by the Boko Haram sect. Now let's say the next piece of news. It's quite unfortunate that um, the terrorist group in Nigeria is uh, getting a hold of certain parts of the country and taking innocent lives. Imagine this young, young man assassinated just like that. Now, let's look at the next news. Uh, Diesel-laden tanker falls, catches fire in Lagos. This one is from Punch News. Uh, let's, let's take a few lines from the story. A tanker conveying 33,000 liters of diesel fell on the Nepal Road in the Alaba Rago area of Lagos State on Monday. Punch Metro gathered that the yet-to-be-identified driver of the tanker was maneuvering his way to get ahead of other vehicles when he rammed into an electric pole in the area. The impact of the crash was said to have resulted in a spark and the tanker fell on each side and spilled its content on the road. Alright, so this one is also from the punch. The one, Abdul Salami orders warn of hunger by the year 2050. Former heads of state generals Yakubu Gowon, Abdul Salami Abubakar on Monday in Kaduna advised the federal government to pay close attention to agriculture. Also, former governors of Niger and Adamawa states Abangida Aliu and Nurtala Yanko asked that Nigerians should take agriculture seriously. They spoke at a sixth national lecture of Sir Ahmad Bello Memorial Foundation in Katuna. The lecture was instituted in honor of the late premier of the defunct northern region, Sir Ahmedu Bello. Abu Bakr said the solution to food insecurity in the country was in mechanized farming. Uh, the next piece of news, let's take this one from um, channels. And it says, we are afraid Mieti Ala reacts to creation of Operation Amoteko. The National Secretary Mieti Ala Kauta Hori Salah al -San, says his organization is afraid that if the Amoteko security outfit is allowed to operate, it could turn out to be a disaster for the country. Alassane, who was a guest on China's television Sunrise Daily on Tuesday, likened the initiative to the Odua People's Congress, APC, which he claimed has a history of heinous crimes and killings. We are afraid because if they don't tame this monster at the early stage, it is going to be a serious disaster for the country, he said. He also described the initiative as a threat to democracy. Speaking further, he accused those calling for the creation of the security outfit of planning to displace the headsmen in the Yoruba-speaking states. For us, Amotekun, the Yoruba tribal militia, is one of the greatest threats to democracy we now have in place. We cannot empower an ethnic militia that has a violent crime. On to the next piece of news. This one is from uh, Vanguard. 
and he says, Breaking. After days of silence, Atiku speaks on Amoteko, cautions FG. The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the 2019 presidential election, Al-Haji Atiku Abubakar, as the Vice President Muhammad Buhari, led federal government to support the creation and establishment of internal security outfit such as Amoteko. He backed the establishment of Amoteku, noting that such outfit would assist the police, armed forces, and paramilitary bodies in securing the nation. Disclosing this via his official Facebook handle, the former vice president cautioned FG, adding that the right to self-defense enshrined in Article 51 of the United Nations Charter is a right and nobody has the authority to criminalize the protection of human life. All right, so that's uh, Atiku giving his own opinion about the security outfit about Atiku. Let's take uh, another news very quickly. And this one is coming from Information Nigeria. It says... Aha, I love this news. You should listen to this. It says, enjoy your youth, but don't destroy your fall. Naramali tells fans. Popular Nigerian rapper Naramali has unusually given out a serious life lesson to his fans on social media. The rapper, who has a cult-like following on social media, advises his fans, known as Malians, to enjoy their youth but in the process should not destroy their future. This is coming following cries from different groups in the country on the influence of the rapper on many Nigerian youths. As a Malian, you have to enjoy your youth, but don't destroy your future. Wow. So guys, what do you think about Naira Mali giving out this sort of priceless advice to his fans really thoughtful to ask me now let's move on to the next piece of news okay this one is coming from life and it says viewers left amused after wendy williams farted on tv if you're familiar with the name wendy williams then you would know it is synonymous with controversy the television host is once again in the news after she appeared to let out a loud fart, fart while live on air during one of her shows. The 55-year-old seemingly suffered an embarrassing moment while speaking about NFL star Odell Beckham's butt-slapping incident on the popular segment Hot Topics of her show. This when the Williams show. In a video clip circulating online, Williams tried to fart silently but failed as the sound was picked up by studio microphones. The media personality can be seen adjusting uncomfortably in her seat after the fart was let out but continued with the show. I don't know if I have rights to play this video, but it seems it's on a... Well, let's see if we can play it. If it gets dropped down, then we'll do something about it. Let's just uh, take a listen while the video loads up and see if we can uh, get the sound of that part. If not, we'll move on to the next piece of news. Let's try oh, Del- 27 years old, you're old enough to understand political correctness in the times that we live now. You can't just slap people on the booty. Of course, he probably knows it's not right from a man to a woman or a woman to a man, but you can't even do that locker room thing. That cop wasn't playing that. I mean, you're lucky you only got battery. What if he filed for sexual assault? (laughs) Hit me in the comment section and let me... Let me know what you feel about that. Was that really a fire or something? It sounded much like a fire. Let's take the next news. Um, let's take this one. Okay. This one is from Daily Post. And it says, How I battled devil. Alcohol 
Kanye West. I really love to see what's going on here with Kanye West. Popular American rapper Kanye West has revealed his struggles with alcohol and devil during his transition journey to being a Christian. Speaking at a prayer rally in Arizona tagged Awaken 2020, organized by a group of anti-gay LGBTQ pastors, Kanye, who is now a born again, opened up on how his spiritual journey with God helped his mental condition and saved him from alcohol. There was some vodka in the refrigerator at my office. Sometimes I would just go ahead and take a drink from it in the middle of the day. I was walking toward that kitchen kitchenette area and I stopped myself and I said, Devil, you're not gonna find find a beat me today. And it's something that we take on day by day. Every day that I don't pick up that drink, I beat the devil. I have been to the mental hospital and back working for the devil. But Jesus saves. No matter how long you've been away, no matter how long you've been in the dark, the light is right there, ready to save, to give you the confidence, he said. Kanye West has been in the media of late over his new religious shift. Since the beginning of 2019, West has spent each Sunday leading church services called Sunday Service, featuring a choir singing gospel covers of their songs. He also released a new album titled Jesus is King, after many delays on October 25th. The album is more like a Christian album with informal prayers. Nice one. I'm so happy for Kanye West. So happy that he found Jesus and his life is on a better road. I do hope he keeps it up and never looks back. Now let's take the next piece of news. Yes, this one is from The Nation and it says Emo Assembly confirms commissioner nominee. Emo Assembly on Tuesday screened and confirmed a commissioner nominee sent by Governor Hope Zodima. The nominee, Barrister C.O.C. Akaulisa, whose name was contained in a message earlier sent to the House by the Governor and read at plenary by Speaker Collins. Chiji was screened following the request by Uzodina for speedy consideration for his nomi- of his nomination. Beg your pardon. Akaulisa has been designated as Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice by the Governor. During the screening, he expressed happiness at his nomination by Governor Uzodima and described the opportunity as a call to serve the people of Inner State. He promised to contribute his quota and ensure good governance as promised by the All Progressive Congress led administration in the state. Akalisa is expected to be sworn in any time. Yes, this one is also from the Daily Post. Borno, Boko Haram cuts off Maiduguri from Nigeria's electricity grid. Boko Haram insurgents have cut off Maiduguri, the Borno state capital, from the national electricity grid. In recent weeks, the terrorists have launched attacks on villages along Damaturu Maiduguri Road. The United Nations, UN, recently raised the alarm that Boko Haram and ISWAP fighters now mount roadblocks on the Aziz. In a statement on Monday, Ndidi Mba, spokesperson of the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, said the insurgents damaged electricity equipment serving the state capital and its environs. She assured the agency is making efforts to restore electricity supply in the area as soon as possible. And this one is from the cable. Buhari, terrorists will pay a heavy price for killing Tan Chairman. President Muhammad Buhari has condemned the killing of Lawan Andimi, chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria Can, in Michika local government area of Adamawa State. Andimi was abducted, abducted by the pardon early January when the insurgents attacked Michika. The news of his death broke on Tuesday morning. In a statement by Garba Shehu, senior special assistant to the president, Quoted Buhari has, as describing the killing as cruel, inhuman, and deliberately provocative. He said the president expressed sorrow that the insurgents killed the religious leader while giving signals that they were willing to release him with third parties. 
The president assured Nigerians that terrorists will continue to pay a heavy price for their actions and would comprehensively be defeated by our determined armed forces. President Buhari consoles the Christian community all over Nigeria, the government and the people of Adamawa State and the bishop's family over the sad loss of the man of God. The president urged nations of the world to end all support provided to Boko Haram and Islam in West Africa. These were terrorist groups whose only goal is to sow death, violence and destruction in the sub-region. Okay, so right there you hear the president talking about the death of the Khan chairman and he outrightly condemned the act. Now, the next news is only coming from The Guardian. I beg your pardon, from The Vanguard. And um, this should be our last piece of news for today. Oh, I think there's one more after this one. And this one is coming from The Nation. From The Nation. Five dead, 11 houses lost to Lagos Pipeline fire. There you can see photos of uh, the Lagos Pipeline fire. Residents of Ilekpo and Ekoro roads near Abulegba in Abado, Kudu, local council development area of Lagos State, are counting their losses after, beg your pardon, following last Sunday night's pipeline explosion. It was another day of agony and fury as residents answered their losses in the pipeline explosion that ravaged some communities in Abado, Kudu, local council development area of Lagos on Sunday night. The explosion which started around 8 p.m. reminded them of past horrible moments. Like the previous explosions, the Sunday disaster did not go with their casualties. Five persons were confirmed dead, while 11 houses, 39 vehicles, and 17 shops were lost to the explosion. The number of those who sustained injuries could not be ascertained and scores of them have been taken to various hospitals. When the nation visited the scene on Monday, many burnt vehicles, buildings, and electric electricals littered the road. Some residents said the fire started a few minutes after the vandals had filled over 24 fuel tankers of 33,000 liters. They said the vandals covered the point from which they siphoned the petroleum product with sand. According to them, the vandals operated almost daily with no one to challenge him. A plank trader, al Bukola Balihiz Afuakbe, said an old man popularly called Baba Araukami died in an in incident. A resident, Taiwo Udugueson, said, I heard people saying, put up the light, don't turn on your gas, don't strike matches. Immediately, I got inside, not long before that, we saw fire coming from the gutter, and that was the end. All I have, all I have, beg your pardon, all I had, ha, all I had have been lost. The cloth I'm putting on was bothering me. Everything is gone. And this is truly a sad incident right here, you know. A very, very sad one indeed. Now let's take our last piece of news for the day. Okay, this one is from Punch. And uh, it says, full list, 29 Nigerian words in Oxford Dictionary. Latest updates. Wow. 29 Nigerian words and expressions were added in the latest January 2020 updates of Oxford English Dictionary. In the blog post, OED said some of the words are borrowed while others are images. Here is a list of the new Nigerian words and senses added to the OED in the latest update. Okay, so I think the words added are aggregate. This is an adjective. It will function as, a, as an adjective and that it will mean of or relating to or using agriculture. The next is barbing salon. <laughs> barbing salon, a barber shop. 
So the original term will be barber shop for the Nigerian coinage, coinage for this with barber salon. And it's going to be a noun. Wow. The next one is buka. A roadside restaurant or street store with a seating area selling cooked food at low prices. Wow. Bukateria, a roadside restaurant or street store with a seating area selling cooked food at low prices. Chop. This is from uh, Ghanaian English and Nigerian English. It means to acquire money quickly and easily, frequently in negative sense. Let me just run through these words so because of time. So we we'll have chop chop, downfall, to eat money. Ember month, flag off, flag, flag again, gist, gist, Uber. This one is off or relating to a governor or governorship or governorship. It is an adjective. Canny wood, Caleb. <laughs> I love this. Caleb is singular and plural, a condition in which one or both of a person's deeds are turned inwards, resulting in a noticeable gap between the feet. Next is Mama Put. Wow. Mama Put, next tomorrow. That is the day after tomorrow. non indigenous and non-native. Okada. Wow. In Nigeria, a motorcycle which passengers can use as a taxi service to put to bed. Next one, qualitative. To rob minds. Seth. Sent forth severally to Kumbo. To Kumbo denoting an important second hand product, especially a car. Zoning. And there you are. Those are the 29 words, Nigerian words, that have been adopted into the Oxford English Dictionary, the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. So there you are, guys. Um, what do you think about the news today? What do you think about Buhari uh, condemning the act of Boko Haram? And what do you think about Boko Haram killing Khan Chairman? What do you think about Atiku and his position on Amateko? What do you think about the fire explosion at um, Ileko? What do you think about Naira Mali giving advice to his, his fans? Popularly known as Malians, and what do you think about Kanye West given his uh, experience as a Christian and how he dealt with the devil and alcohol during those times that he struggled with, uh, with um, what do you call it, with, uh, emotional imbalance? You know, so let me know in the comment section. Do hit me up if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe, like the video. Share the video, drop a comment below. All right, and once again, if you're new, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for sticking around. Expect more news, more time. Take care, adios.